Now, hello again. This is, this is just a little bit of a hangout stream. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty tired from a long work day. And I'm going to just hang out a bit and install some games on Windows 98, on PCM here. So I'm running Windows 98 in PCM version 14. That has come out recently. And, uh, you know, I just feel like streaming a bit and just, you know, chill stream. Hangout stream, I don't know. So this is not going to be too exciting, but uh, yeah. So I'm just going to test out a few games that I have for this. So how about this one? How about, let's start with this one. I'm going to... Bu, 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 bu. Where are we? Let's mount that CD. As I said, I have, uh, you know, like over the last few months, actually, I have sort of started to turn all my old PC games, like my big old PC game CD binders into images. So, yeah. And uh, I have not actually tested out a lot of them yet. I have not actually played a lot with this. So, um, this is, uh, yeah, this is... Can I actually see what this is? Do you mean, oh yeah, you can. Tomb Raider. This is the first Tomb Raider game. Um, this is sort of a... I kind of hate this, actually. This is bad. Um, this is from Sold Out Software. Which is kind of a... Uh, you know, sort of a budget range, CD range thing, and uh, it's kind of not great. Um, let's install this. Oh yeah, Tomb Raider 1 was actually still a MS-DOS game. The thing is, it will probably work well like this. So uh, how about we do this? Can you please? Oh dear, okay. Tomb, how about that? And let's auto detect that stuff. Let's continue. Save settings and installing. That was a quick install. So now we have Tomb Raider installed. One thing, I think this actually already, yes, this already comes with the 3DFX patch. So that's kind of why you, why you, why running this in PCM might be a good idea. Um, let's put this in here. Yes to all. And let's see whether that works. So I'm currently emulating a Pentium PC. We can change clock speeds at will with PCM, which is good. Currently I'm at 133 megahertz. That should be enough, actually. That should be enough for Tomb Raider, I think, with a Voodoo 2 accelerator card. So we actually have 3DFX here, and uh, I have all the drivers installed. So I'm just going to try it now. Let's do Tomb Raider. Boom. Did I actually try this before? I don't know. Whatever. I'm doing it now. Yes, core design. It seems to work well. I wonder how the 3DFX will... How we will handle that. Detail levels, controls... You know what? Let's just go into Lara's home. Which is sort of the tutorial area of this game. Ah, and that is some interlaced ass video. Jeez. That is some interlaced ass video. Welcome to my home. Here we go. go yeah, this room. actually looks pretty good. Use the direction keys to go into the music room. Yeah, so she is talking to us. Um, no, this might actually be too loud. Whoops. Oh, let me quickly adjust volumes a bit here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah. This is way too loud. Let's turn that down a bit. Okay. So, yeah, that's Tomb Raider. I've... Hmm. I never really... Okay. I've played a bunch of Tomb Raider. I could button. never say that I really got into them. I have a lot of respect for them. I kind of, you know... I kind of like this type of methodical platformer. For example, something like... Uh, like what's... You know, something... I'm a huge fan of Prince of Persia, for example, and uh, this is kind of a 3D version of that. But uh, back in the day, I don't know. I always had my troubles with Tomb Raider. Let's just let's just play this for a bit. I don't know. 
Okay. She has a weird ass home. I think this has been, um, if I remember correctly, this was much expanded in Tomb Raider 2. I think Tomb Raider 2 is actually the one I played the most. This is just a bit of... Uh... Okay, what do I need to do here? I think I just need to do this parkour. Okay, I think this is the one where you have to run to the edge. No, wait. I think you can do it like that. Jump one and then... Yes. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Right, this is a really big one. To do a running jump exactly as before, except while I'm in the air, press and hold. Might actually. Now I'm kind of into the idea of playing this. I must say. I also kind of love how this game looks. You know, it's kind of a fantastic type of early 3D. I think most people have probably played this on PlayStation, right? At some point I also bought like all the old Tomb Raider games on Steam. But as far as I know, this first game, Tomb Raider 1, actually runs on... Can I go back to the... Can I start a new game? Let's start a new game. Um, I think this original game ran um, like if you if you buy this on steam it just runs in dosbox and obviously it won't have 3d fx uh, all the 3d fx stuff so i think it only runs at vga resolution actually i think it's only 320 by 240 which uh you know or two 320 by 200 um which is obviously not as good as this so and it, it does not have texture filtering and so on so um you know obviously like with 3d acceleration this also looks a lot better than the than the playstation version see all these you can always that's always that that has always been a thing in Tomb Raider that you can kind of see the the seams in the world. So um, yeah, Tomb Raider has kind of a tile-based world, right? So everything is made out of these sort of blocks. You can really see the building blocks of the world, and I don't know. These days, I think. I actually find this quite appealing. Like you can actually see, like it's always this width. See where the texture seam is there until here, right? And it's essentially the, the world is gigantic pillars, all these pillars in this size that are cut at certain, at certain altitudes and at certain, not altitudes, at certain things, right? And uh, yeah, that's just how the world is made. I really love... I kind of love that. I kind of like when you can... When you can make out stuff. Jeez. Yeah, I'm super tired. I'm really bad at talking right now, but... Uh, yeah, whatever. All right. So yeah, let's just I'm just going to I'm just going to play this a bit. But this works fine. Like uh 3M is really good for running this. So you don't need to actually then you don't need to worry about nonsense like glide wrappers. I hate that stuff actually. I hate fiddling with glide wrappers for for Windows. Um and you know you can run this nicely in a window or in full screen and this is just great might be the best way to run this game actually yeah. for a while I was actually thinking that maybe a PlayStation emulator is the best way to do this but uh, yeah I think this has that beat and there's something like there's something really cool about the first Tomb Raider you know as you can see like this is 
it's kind of a uh, it's kind of a lonely game in a way. It's kind of a I don't know. Like the worlds are sort of these kind of static, empty areas that I find kind of fascinating in a way. Like I'm I'm really into old 3D spaces in games, right? And this is sort of a this has a very very specific charm to it that I that I enjoy a lot. Okay. I think there are bad guys down here. Yes. Also, they, like you're not, uh, you're not actually. I think you don't meet many people in this. I kind of changed that for Tomb Raider 2, because uh, yeah, Tomb Raider 2 has, I think, in the even in, like in the starting thing, wasn't that Venice or something? It has you fighting a ton of dudes with guns, and uh, this does not have any of that. And obviously, that has gone. There's, that has progressed ever further sort of culminating in the latest reboot, which has you just mowing down everyone. But yeah... I don't know. I think I like Tomb Raider. Now that I think about it, I think I like this game. Oh shit, there's a bear. Let's shoot a bear. Kinda makes me, makes me sad about that bear. It's a nice majestic animal that consists of weird component parts. <laughs> Oops, there's also a, a bat around. All right. Yes. It's kind of weird, but I, I remember some stuff about this. I remember that you want to go down here and follow this because, yeah. And that just gets you the the thing the, the medipack okay okay I think I'm not going to play much more much more of this but uh yeah, I'm feeling kind of the edge of playing this game. Not today, not on stream, but... Huh. Let's see. Getting a few dropped frames again, which I don't like. It's an internet issue. So the problem with internet at my house is uh, I'm running, you know, I have a kind of a crappy DSL thing here, which isn't, which isn't fast to begin with. And the, the telephone lines are kind of flaky in this house, which is bad. So I constantly get these, uh, yeah, I constantly get sort of um, service going away for, for a bit. Uh, that's terrible if you want to stream. Good news is I have actually I have actually cancelled my you know my uh, my internet service, which takes three months from internet contract, and that takes three months, and uh, then I will switch to cable cable internet, which will be great in comparison. So that's kind of the plan. And uh, then I will probably be able to stream properly and at better speeds and better better quality. I don't even know if I'm going to upload this to YouTube, if I'm honest. This is not a high quality stream. This is just me being a doof. Okay, I think I think that's and that's enough Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider working well. Good tested. Let's check out some more stuff. Let's check out some other things. Exit game. There we go. Tomb Raider by Core Design. 
Fantastic. Let me see. Let's get something else going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, let's pop this in. So this is WinQuake. So the best way the best way to play Quake is obviously using a source port. I usually use Mark V or Mark V. I don't even know Mark V, Mark V, or like Quake Spasm or something like that. But um, you know, I just want to kind of check out if my old if ye only quake wants to work how this works pentium 75 yeah is this actually does this actually also include gl quake yes it does huh. let's check yeah let's check out whether this works on on pcm oops no that's bad games. Next. Yeah, there's like, there's not much reason to run Quake at an old, uh, like in an emulated fashion. I mean, you can also run the original in DOSBox, but I find that to work not very well. So. Yeah. Let's see. Yes, I do want to install that in GL Quake. Um, yes, 3DFX. From this disk to the directory. Open GL 35DLL file. Okay, yes, I have 3DFX. Yeah, shortcuts is nice. Finish. All right, let's see whether that works. We're going to start with... Um, Ye olde software rendering. There we go. Oh yes, look at that. That is nice and pixely. Um, oh yeah. Heck yeah, this runs bad. Okay, Pentium 133 is not working. Not working that great for Quake. Cool. I, I, I'm not really... But that actually makes sense. Um, yeah, being able to run Quake at at a high resolution back in the day was probably pretty taxing. I'm just going to rack up the, the clock speed here yeah, in the emulator a bit. So we're going to go Pentium MMX 233, which is pretty, pretty hefty. Like if you want to emulate that computer in PCM, you actually need a pretty beefy computer for that. So let's try this now. Yeah, this works. Let's check out. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's still, still. Wow. Yeah, software mode, high resolution software mode is taxing. It probably will run way better in uh, SGL Quake. But. Uh, Yeah, this is not, yeah, this does not run very well. What was that? Was it, oh, where's the plus key? Oh dear. No. Ah, oh, I totally forgot the console commands. Um. <laughs> Let's quake console commands. Quake wiki. Quake one. Oh, plus M look, that was it. Okay. So, um, we, M look. Yes, now we can do this. And, uh, what was the crosshair? I think we just crosshair. No, that does not work. Just crosshair. Crosshair one. Oh yeah, it works differently. Crosshair one. Oh no, shit. 
And now we got a crosshair. Good. And uh, yeah, I, I don't have everything set properly. Let me see. Customize controls. Uh, ba -ba -ba, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Walk forward, back pedal, step right. So we're going to have modern first-person shooter compatible controls. Swim up, swim down. Oh yeah, that also existed. But I really like how the original Quake looks in software mode. Oh yeah, and see the 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 hitchy animations. <laughs> That's actually the cool thing about the source port Mark Mark V Mark V. However you want to call this, um, it actually it actually lets you run the game in software mode, which is awesome. So, yeah, let's just do a bit of hard quaking. No oh dear. Yeah, the the frame rate is not great actually. This actually does not run. <laughs> I don't know. Oops. This actually does not run at the frame rate you want to run Quake at, but. Uh, we're going to try GL Quake soon. But, uh, yeah, that's Quake. Oh man, Quake is a cool game. Does the music actually work? This is actually not... I have the CD in, but it does not actually seem to play the CD music. Weird. Oh no, it does. It has that sweet Trent Reznor soundtrack. Alright. Quake is also a game like I've never I've never played a lot of it. I've only played like a few levels in the in the in the uh in the first episode, actually. Quake is actually one of these games that I want to finish at some point. Play and finish at some point. You know, I play a ton of Doom. I play a lot of Doom. <laughs> and uh, a lot of Doom wards and so on. But uh, yeah, never really got much into Quake, although I really like it. I, I respect Quake a lot. And, um, you know, some people often say that they find the game a bit too, you know, dreary and, uh, and brown and gray, you know, and that is true, right? Like, Doom is a much more colorful game, but I think Quake also has a really interesting mood to it that, uh, you know, that kind of is easy to underestimate. Oh, wait, I forgot the quad damage. We definitely want to get the quad damage. So, boom, boom, let's get the quad damage. Alright, still probably the most satisfying power up because you can do stuff like this. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Oops, 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 oops. Uh, where was the switch? Yes, here. Let's do this. Uh, let's collect the double shotgun. Man. It's kind of weird to me that I remember all these secrets. This is also a secret door, but that leads to... You know, the quad damage as well. It goes to the same place. Okay. The classic puzzle here. You know, uh, yeah, there's something about. You know, they really went for kind of the vertical design thing, right? Rooms upon rooms and all that kind of stuff, because uh, they could do that now. And, uh, you know, there has something to that. I. Yeah, I think I like Quake. I should play through Quake. Got the last secret. Let's get that. Go down here. I think that should be all secrets, right? Yes. Just one more secret. 
And that's it. Alright, well, let's go back. Collect the yellow armor. Yeah, Quake's just a... just a cool game. Man, it's software is such an amazing company. Like, especially like when the old team was still together, right? It's at least when... You know, this is obviously the last id software game with significant contributions by john romero and uh you know i never really i never really played much of quake 2 but i also never really could get into it but uh yeah okay let's try gl quake and see if that works okay just be patient yes i will mm -hmm. classic 3d fx logo the necropolis oh yeah that bilinear filtering can you actually let me see i think you cannot turn that off it's always yeah video mode from the command line okay so we cannot do that here yeah. but yeah it runs much better oops Where's the chat gone? There we go. Yeah. Man, this looks different, doesn't it? Oops. Yeah, I kind of... There's something to the way this game looks in, uh, in software mode. There's sort of a, a grime to it that gets kind of lost when you when you use 3D acceleration. Like it plays so like it plays so much more smoothly. But yeah, I don't know. But uh Yeah. Like it's similar with um actually like Doom was never never officially had 3D acceleration, right? But you can there are 3D accelerated source ports for Doom. Like uh, GZ Doom, for example, or GL Boom, and um, like even if you turn off all the texture filtering and all this kind of crap, there's still something that looks bland and sort of lacking in contrast compared to um, software software rendering. Like the way the the color banding and sort of the the eight bit color mode, it's I don't know. Yeah. All these folks, yeah. I think that might be enough Quake, but uh, yeah, that works nicely. I could actually, I also have, have the Quake 2 CD, so I couldn't, you know, I could install that as well. You know what? Let's install Quake 2. While we're at it. Because why the heck not? And see how that works. That could actually, Quake 2 might actually get a bit uh, long in the tooth. So, uh, I mean, uh, it was 97. So, maybe it actually works. I don't know. Maybe it works okay. Like Pentium 233, I think uh, Quake use can use higher stuff, but, oh well, let's just try it. Let's just install that shit and try it out. Um, okay, yes, that installation process. Yeah, I know, some install shield crap. I'm not going to register because I don't have internet connection from within PCM. Oh, let's do maximum, yeah. Next, change directory. Let's go into games. Oops, wrong one. This one. Quake 2. Oops. So, yeah, I wonder how well this works in PCM. Like, again, there's no reason to emulate playing, like, there's no reason to play Quake 2 in, em in an emulator. Except for, like, historical curiosity, right? Because, um, 
Like they are good, good quake source boards, quake two source boards. I think Yamagi is pretty good if you want sort of the authentic experience because it does not really change anything. It just makes it run well on uh, on modern Windows and adds like arbitrary resolution options and all this kind of stuff. And um, and there's also stuff like KM Quake, for example, which is uh, sort of if you want the enhanced experience, you know. So, uh, yeah, there's not really any reason to do this, but, you know, I kind of, I kind of like installing the original, you know, there's something, ah, there's something, something that makes me feel warm and fuzzy when doing this. So let's install that and let's check it out. I need to get something to drink, by the way, because, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get myself something. Oh no, I actually have something here. No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to get myself something to drink. I'm back in one minute. All right, okay. So yeah, let's see how the, well this works. Again, I said the Pentium MMX 233 might get a little long in the tooth, right? Like a computer of that vintage at that point. I think, yeah. The Voodoo 2 kind of, um, you can get a lot of mileage out of that. Right? You can play a lot of things pretty well with that. I've, at some point I've tried my old Unreal I tried Unreal with that, um, and Unreal does not, it kind of runs, but it gets kind of dicey, it gets kind of hitchy and uh, and slow, but uh, yeah, so, ba -ba -ba, Quake 2, there's also no reason to emulate Unreal, by the way, it's uh, Unreal Gold, especially runs really well you can just install that and uh, it runs well on modern computers especially if you get like the gog version which i did at some point so yeah uh quake 2 let's uh, let's check this out yeah punch that stuff loading oh there's some loading going Oh dear. Oh man. Oh, Quake 2 looks awesome in low res. Holy shit. Thank you. I mean, we can, we can do open yeah, 3DFX OpenGL higher resolution. You can probably do that, right? But, man, I have not seen Quake 2 like this in a long time. Probably never, because I've probably always did this. Huh. And with the source ports, you cannot go 320. Yeah, that's, that's quite too. Yes, polygonal explosions. This is such a cool thing. Like, yes, this game has polygonal explosions. Okay, free look on, crosshair, yes, customize control. This runs pretty well, actually, so I might have been worried for nothing. Yeah, with, yeah, 3D acceleration goes a long way. Um, uh, yeah, down crouch, inventory, use item, let's do this, drop item, previous item, next item, there we go. <laughs> yeah, the original pea shooter. Look at that. I kind of like, you know, the blood is sort of, as you can see, like it's sort of uh, realized in the same particles as everything else. Like particle effects weren't, hadn't, hadn't, 
come that far at this point. So it actually looks like the if you are into the gore splatters, as they say, then doing this actually makes that stuff look a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Out of item shotgun. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it runs kind of. Hmm. It really does run better when you when you don't do software mode. But ah, oh, there's something about this that. Yeah, look at that grime. Look at the. There's like, there's a putty now on everything, and ah, oh, it's so good. Look at that. You know, like everything. That was kind of the thing about 3D acceleration. It's awesome, but it also smoothed everything over, pretty much. And, you know, it had to happen, obviously, but, uh... Ah, there's... A certain something something about this. You can almost feel the grit. <laughs> yeah. Right, blow this thing up, which blows that guy up. You know, it's software shooters have always had this kind of reputation of being dumb, dumb shooters. And I always thought, or like, I'm of the opinion that uh, this is kind of undeserved. I think Doom and also Quake 1 is kind of... Um, those, are, those are more clever than that reputation suggests. Like there's a lot of really clever level design in Doom and really like experimental and cool stuff in that game that it often does not really get clever... Uh, get clever, yeah, get credit for. In, um, and Quake kind of the same thing, I guess, although I don't have all that much experience with Quake. And when I'm playing this, I don't know, I think Quake 2 is maybe where some of that, some of that is justified. Also the textures look fucking great, unfiltered. Jeez. Man, software mode Quake 2 in 320 is, is is kind of awesome. I'm super into that right now. Mhm. Mm that kind of makes me want to try uh, try other games like this. You know, could try to run Unreal at this, for example. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, um, games beyond this are probably really made for. OpenGL and uh, 3D Accelerator, so that probably does not compute as great as this does, but I'm still kind of kind of enchanted right now. Yeah, Quake 2 is kind of a dumb shooter. Like, a long time ago I actually played a bunch of this, and it's this all the way, all the time. You run through these levels, find some secrets, kill some things. House of the Dead 1. Oh yeah, I actually have House of, House of the Dead 1. I could, I could check, we could, we could pop that in. If you want. <laughs> House of the Dead 2 will probably not work. I'm pretty sure that uh, one was House of the Dead 2, I think that was 2001. You know, you can kind of, with PCM, you can kind of run things up to, um, up to, you know, up to 90, 98. Some things get a little dicey in 98. 99, yeah, you can run like low-tech games from 99, you can run those. Like, most strategy games and stuff, that, that stuff works. But it gets a real, it gets a little troublesome with uh, sort of 3D games, and uh, I think House of the Dead 2 was in the 2000s, so that is certainly needs a beefier PC than a Pentium 233. 
But uh, yeah. I've actually never tried House of the Dead 1 in uh, in PCM, so let's do that. Let's just pop that in. Let me see. Da -da -da. House. Yes, indeed. There it is. Mm, whoops. Wrong one. Install the House of the Dead. Man, I have not played this in a long time. MDK1 is good, yeah. MDK1 works well. Yeah, MDK1 also, like, MDK1 also had a 3DFX patch, didn't it? I think it actually does support 3D acceleration. MDK1 also, I think MDK1 also works well in DOSBox, by the way. Yeah, 97 was a great year for games. 98 was also a great year for games, but 97 is severely underrated. Um, okay, let's do Hooted. All right, and let's pop that in. Yeah. You know, like that was also right, sort of the, 97 was kind of the real-time strategy explosion, wasn't it? Wasn't like Dark Rain from 97 as well? I enjoyed Dark Rain. I remember like StarCraft was uh, 98, obviously, but StarCraft came kind of at the to at the tail end of the... When everyone and their dogs were making real real time strategy games, you know, Age of Empires was ninety seven, if I remember correctly. So that is awesome as well. MDK, yeah. MDK is great. Like MDK, MDK gets so weird after a while. Uh, no, I do not want to install DirectX 5 because I have a different one. Uh, okay, good. Okay, Direct3D, this should work. Let's see. Like, it does not have 3DFX, which... It does, it does not have glide support, but... Uh, 8-bit textures, bilinear filter, yeah, we can keep that on. Let's just try it. Decompressing textures, okay. Total Annihilation, yes indeed. Parkan? I don't know Parkan. What's that? Total Annihilation is a great game as well. I've never played much of it. I, this is something I, uh, I have observed from a distance mostly, but uh, I think it's a great game, I should. Oh, Space Sim, okay. I don't know that. I don't actually know that game. I like Space Sims. I think Action Planet Explorer. Oh, this this sounds cool. Space Sim Action Planet Explorer. Mm -hmm. From 97, you say. Huh. Okay, let's do some House of the Deading, right? So, House of the Breading. Um, yeah, House of the Dead is a dumb game. The cool thing about this is obviously, you know, it's for PC, so you can use the mouse. And that's kind of the best way to... Oh dear, there's some weird mouse acceleration here. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look into Parkan, I guess. Ah, this is so dumb. This is so dumb and so good. Oops. Did not save that guy. I'm actually having a bit of trouble with the mouse acceleration. Dimmy. Okay, that's you. Zombers. Boom. <laughs> oh yeah, these guys. Like obviously, I remember back in the day with House of the Dead, it was kind of like in, in the PC magazines that I read, um, 
How the blue dead got like half a page and got like yeah, fifty percent uh, as a as a rating. Not rating. What do you call it? Like uh, you know, but yeah, it got rated like it, it wasn't well received. But uh, obviously, like people were playing. You know, what kind of comp like on on the PC, people were kind of comparing this to to you know first person shooters and so on. That was kind of the frame of reference here, yeah? and obviously this is something else. Arcade machine, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, I wasn't. I re was scarcely in arcades because um, in Germany, arcades or like uh, no video arcades, where you would maybe play something like this, were subject to gambling laws. Actually, so you could only enter these if you were over. What was it? Twenty one, eighteen. Something like that. So uh, I didn't really get to enjoy the heyday of arcades. Um, but I remember being in the Netherlands at some point, and there I played some House of the Dead. And this is obviously like the most fun with, uh, with sort of a gun that you wave at the screen and imagine that you're an awesome gunslinger. Right now, I'm just an awesome mouse slinger, so gonna have make have to make do with that, right? Right. Well, that's also fine. I think that this sort of probably is sort of the second best way to play this. It was a, that was also kind of a weird time for Sega, right? Like Sega was actually bringing a lot of their games to to the personal computer. Oh yeah, hello. The shit. Oh, I had to probably open this. I'm doing a really bad job here. This might be enough House of the Dead, but uh, oh, cripes. Okay. Yeah. Ecstatica. Ecstatica is also cool, yeah. Uh, uh, the. The balls game, as uh, I liked to call it. Right, so Exatica was sort of another experiment in early 3D stuff, and it was obviously it went a different path, right? It didn't it, ren it rendered everything in spheres, not in um, not in polygons. So uh, had sort of a different vibe to it, and uh, you know that actually seems kind of strange now. Let's do something. Stop! No! Oops, I murdered that woman. <laughs> but I think Ecstatic Ecstatica was kind of cool, wasn't it? Like, I, I don't have. I mostly have um, recollections and memories of how it looks, but uh, it's kind of an alone in the dark ish game. And you know, everything was rendered with spheres, which there's certainly nothing else that looks like it. Makes it kind of unique. Yeah, just okay. Yeah, I think I might be done with House of the Dead. I mean, it's a dumb thing, but uh, it's a fun dumb thing. But yeah, let's give my poor mouse. A rest. It also has PC mode. Let me see. What's this? Okay, so they added a bunch of complexity here. Okay, so you can play as whoever. That's that's cool. Don't you? yeah. Now that's House of the Dead. What else did you? Oh yeah, total annihilation. I don't know if that works with. Uh, oh dear, I'm getting dropped frames left and right again. That's not great. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, Rage of Mages. Remember that one? Yeah. 
Yeah, that was obviously Jedi Knight was also ninety seven. Um, let me see. You know what? Let's try that. Oops, oh dear, that was wrong. Endless play, okay. <laughs> Don't remember anything about that, but okay. Um, MDK, yeah, right. Magic carpet. Magic, and then that was DOS. Probably don't need to run that in here, but uh, wasn't Need for Speed 2 also? I think that was uh, 97. Oh, I lost my. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. Jedi Knight. Yeah, let's, let's pop that in. This should. Jedi Knight should also run well in this. In. Uh, in PCM it's always kind of it doesn't really work that well like if you get the the GOG version or the Steam version it does not really work that well well this should this should actually work out fine let me see because it's square in the I think it has 3dfx and uh, you know it's a 97 game so that should be exactly the specs that we need Let's do that. Oops. Let's do that. Jedi. Take a trip down that memory lane. Mm hmm. Was Civilization 2. That was 96, wasn't it? I played a lot of Civilization 2. Worms 2 as well. That's also good. I played a lot of Worms 2. Jeez. Okay. Pay $10 for high res sound. Yes. Come on, install. Shadow. Okay, so also what was that game? Shadow something. You start out as a human, then you get other forms as four-armed tiger man, aqualad, a beholder, and a dragon. I don't know. This does not ring a bell right now. Shadow. Hmm. Let's do this. Yeah, this is actually not. Oh, and the dragon. Hmm. Like also from that era. I mean, there was like Shadow of the Beast or something like that, but. That was way earlier, right? Yeah, there we go. Captain Claw. Captain Claw is also great, yeah. I have that one here as well. I remember Captain Claw being hard as bollocks. FPS with RPG element. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that. Captain Claw is kind of a... I remember that game looking really, really great. Right? It's is sort of a high-res 2D game. There we go, there we go. Oh god, I probably have to set up everything. Like the controls are probably bulk as hell. So... Maybe we're just gonna take a quick look and then... Uh... Oh yeah. 
mouse. I think we need to not reverse that direction. Free look, always run, yes. Display general. Okay. I mean, let's try that. Let's just get into the game a, a little bit and then. Uh, I, I I loved Jedi Knight. I mostly played the... I had, back in the day, I mostly played the two demos. So there was a demo of Jedi Knight and there was a demo of uh, Mysteries of the Sith. I mostly played those. Oh yeah. Yep, playing a shooter with the arrow keys is uh, interesting. Oh god, and Strafe is not bound properly. Yeah, this is good. How can I jump? Oh yeah, like this. Kind of weird, like... From today's perspective... Dark Forces is kind of a better looking game than this. You know, the... The Doomish sprite... Pseudo 3D has kind of aged better than this early 3D. But uh, I find this, I find this really charming. Oops, oh, my chat is gone, oh no. Come back to me, and there we go. Okay, let's see, I think we could, oops, go here. And go up here, haha. -ha. Man, I have a, I have a weirdly, I have a weird memory for secret areas in old games. I don't know why I still know that shit. Like, I forget important things, but I know this crap, you know? I cannot strafe, but I'm too lazy to rebind the controls. Okay. How do I this do this? Yes, okay. Hello. <laughs> These models are so good. Look at this guy. He looks a bit concerned, does he? I mean, I'm pointing a gun at him, so I would look concerned in that case. Oops. Ah, more dropped frames. I'm drop. Mm. Can't wait for my cable internet to... That's going to be... Two long months. And then I... Then I'm actually rid of this horrible DSL nonsense. And that's Jedi Knight. Also a good shooter. Oops. Oh dear. I murdered a civilian. I'm a horrible monster and I'm on my way to the dark side. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, this actually makes me want to play some of these games properly. You know, do I actually do actually do a proper playthrough of you know, that's sort of the fifth game that I don't think that about, but I kind of want to play... <laughs> kind of want to play Quake, the original. Kind of want to play Quake 2 in software mode at 320. Kind of want to play um, this here. House of the Dead, maybe not that much, but, uh, you know, a bit of old action games. I don't know, I <laughs> kind of feel the itch. Maybe I'll do playthrough streams of these games. Eh, maybe not. I don't know. I have other stuff to do. I have a lot of case of cut to play, but uh, yeah. Let's do this. All right. Oh, 
I should not shoot that much. Well, okay, let's check that out, right? Works fantastically. This actually works really well in, uh, in PCM as well. This is good. Um, yeah. Might actually also be a great way to play this. This may be, I think there's actually a way to um, enable sort of arbitrary resolutions and so on in uh, Jedi Knight as well. But if you want the original deal, this might be sort of, this might be a good way. Maybe we can play something that does not involve shooting people. Heroes of Might and Magic 3. I don't really have time for that right now, but that would also be great. Grand Theft Auto 2. Mm -hmm. Still my favorite GTA game. Earthworm Jim 95. Oh yeah, I had that as well. Oh dear. I think that's just a version of Earthworm Jim that runs in a window, so not too interesting. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, let me try this. Okay. So, this is going to be a bit of um, a bit of I'm going to play something that is Probably not known outside of Germany, or maybe, maybe in the Netherlands as well, because it's from a Dutch company, right? This game is called Autobahnraser, and it is a game that is almost famously rotten. This is a terrible, terrible, terrible game. Um, but because the idea of Autobahnraser, like a highway speeder, I don't know how you would, how, how you would translate this, right? But this fantasy kind of appealed to something, to sort of the German consciousness, I guess. And this thing sold gangbusters. Like this thing sold like crazy. And it's so bad. It is almost mythically horrible. So I'm going to install this crap. Shadowcaster, right? Shadowcaster. Wasn't that a Raven Software game? I think that was also wasn't this might have been pre-Doom, wasn't it? Oh no, or am I thinking of something else? But if you, so um, if you, you know, lost their soul and idea, I don't know. Maybe you have to look elsewhere, not to the to the big franchises, right? I mean, like Star Wars and Marvel are these gigantic machines, and uh, that there's no not much room for sparks of inspiration is maybe it's maybe to be expected, right? Okay. Right, this is going to... Like, you're going to witness a horrendous game. Oops, no. Oh, yeah. I exited the game. Almost from reflex. Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to be this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. We're not going to... I just want to go in-game and see what this will do. Okay, let's just quickly do... Oh yeah, let's 
do 3D acceleration. Let's start on easy. Uh, controls. Okay. All right, I can deal with that. And let's start. Okay, this is going to, this is going to, I don't know. Oh dear. Yeah, that does not look good. So this is essentially just a cheaply made, um, oh god, this controls like, okay. This is essentially just a cheaply made sort of quote-unquote racing game um, that they sort of set on German highways. And not even highways, like, we're driving through the... Like, that is... Doesn't even make sense. And, um... And that was enough, right? That was all you needed. And uh, it spawned a franchise. There were a ton of these games. It's kind of it's kind of occupies a similar space to what the um, you know all the all the weird German simulator games, the thing that you know that kind of space of like you know you know what I mean like airport garbage facility simulator all this kind of crap so this is this is essentially that from from 90 i think this was actually you know this game was actually 98 i think i think this was in 1998 so this came i think this came out after need for speed 3 just for for reference and um like um, i uh Oops, there's some police. Hello. Let's not do that. Oh no, now they are after me. I was not even speeding. I was not even speeding. Um. Oh, Christ. Uh, so, you see like how, you know, it's riveting, isn't it? Like the the speed at, the, at which this is running. And the... Uh, it's just... Well, that's kind of the funny thing about this, it's just a... I think it's just like, I was thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be a fun, horrible thing, but... This is actually aggressively boring, isn't it? Well, it's just... And I got fined again, but I think I was actually not... Hmm. Again, not speeding. Okay. I think I can drive 60 there. Okay, and now I, that I'm past the police, I'm going to, I'm going to give it some uh, acceleration, as you can see, or not. Yeah, this game sold hundreds of thousands of copies, which, you know, only in Germany, but that's enough. It was actually kind of the same time where um, US America kind of freaked out about Deer Hunter. Remember Deer Hunter? And everyone around here was just scratching their head why everybody was making these incredibly boring hunting games. And why they sold like gangbusters, you know? It kind of, that kind of struck a chord in the, in the public consciousness as well as this kind of struggle chord in the public consciousness. Don't know what this tells us about the public consciousness, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that sign is just history now. That sign has been obliterated from existence with my little Trabant here. Where does he... Yeah, that guy just accelerated like, yeah. I think that's enough Autobahn Raza. So yeah, a little, that was something quintessentially German, I guess.
made by a Dutch company. So um, they made kind of they always kind of made the same games for Germany and for the Netherlands. So there was also one of these for for Dutch highways. <laughs> And it was essentially the same game, just with different landmarks. And it's not even like, you know, you couldn't even... It wasn't... It, it's not even that recognizable. Okay. Um, should I do something else? Maybe. Is there something... Hmm. Oh, yeah. Let's try that. Okay, I'm going to do something different. I need to I need a palette cleanser here. I'm going to take another game from that same era, but one that I love dearly. That is I think this is an incredible game. I'm going to do some little big adventure too. How about that? So let's install it. This is... I love this game. I don't know. There's a... Like, especially like the, the whole start of the game is um, just... There, and there's a warmth to this game. And the way that this is sort of depicting relationships between characters that... Yeah, I don't know. That is... That just does it for me. <laughs> also, Little Big Adventure 1 is also cool, but uh, LBA 2, or what was it called in the US? I think Relentless, right? But... Yeah. The second game. The second game is actually what sort of bowed me over back in the day. I don't know. Okay, let's copy all that stuff. Checking DirectX. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want to install that because I have a much newer version of DirectX already installed. Play. Oh yeah, that was actually published by Electronic Arts. Well, that's the kind of stuff that Electronic Arts did publish at that point in time. It's kind of weird when you consider what they represent. LBA2. I've only ever played this in German. Oh yeah, syntax. I mean, yeah, and this was kind of a, um, so I think the thing about 97 and 98 is that what we see there is kind of the, uh, kind of a market consolidation in a way, right? Like when, that was kind of when, especially in computer games, when sort of business, like big business entered the, entered the, uh, the equation. And that resulted in like, you know, there was a lot of, like in 97, 98, 99 even, there was a lot of money for weird shit like this, right? But after that, all this kind of started to consolidate in, into sort of the, the game business that we that we kind of know right and it sort of all that stuff kind of consolidated into sort of fewer and fewer companies and publishers and sort of uh, these big mega publishers sort of started to really become that at this point in time and uh, yeah i don't know okay I, I i'm not like i'm i'm not i'm not purely nostalgic when it comes to video games and computer games I think games are actually pretty great now in a lot of ways. In a lot of in a lot of ways they are not. <laughs> right? 
but um, then I haven't really played like a big triple A quote unquote game in in a long time. I usually play like you know the game I play the most is a, a sort of extremely niche roguelike game called Caves of Cut. So right, that's sort of my the the thing I usually do on YouTube. And uh, that's kind of one of my, it's kind of my favorite game ever, and it, it's not even been released. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of super interesting stuff going on, but um, yeah. Still, like the the so in terms of sort of PC games, ninety seven, ninety eight were just kind of a a confluence of things that just resulted in a lot of really cool and really weird shit. And yeah. Yeah, and just stuff got consolidated, right? Like like genres got consolidated. Like game genres. You know? How every Everything becomes a shooter, right? And everything gets in, like RPG elements in it. And sort of everything just kind of merges together. But I think this is sort of kind of a thing that happens when you have sort of a industry, a market-driven thing, right? Okay. Yes. Hello. There we go. Twinson rushed to the downtown pharmacy and find a cure for the Dynafly. He has just crashed in the garden and looks injured. So yeah, this is um, kind of an action-adventure game from uh, from Delphine Software, which is a French company, which was a French company that made, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, it was kind of headed by the, one of the chief people behind the first Alone in the Dark game and they kind of, they kind of fell out in Alphagrams and Alphagrams continued with Alone in the Dark which you know the results of that you know I think Alone in the Dark 2 and 3 are not really great games but um and uh, yeah I don't, I don't remember the name of the designer of this so they made like Little Big Adventure 1 and 2 which are wonderful. So, well, that's fine by me. Also, uh, Delphine Software, the maker of Little Big Adventure, also made the Motor Racer series, funnily enough. You know? Sort of these motorbike racing games that were also published by EA, I think. Um, And at least, like, I played a lot of Motor Racer 1 back in the day, and I uh, really like that. So the thing about Little Big Adventure 2 is that there is a... There's something about this game, especially at the start, where, like, this is pretty mundane, right? Like, we just have to go to the pharmacy and help it, and, oh, I like flying dragon which is not that mundane but it's just you know it's just a town it's raining and there's something sort of real about that and also like how the again how relationships are depicted right so in this game you start out you know and your girlfriend is pregnant and that is not actually a plot point in this that's not something that happens it's just something that is and that is something that games don't really often do. Uh, sort of a... It just seems kind of relatable and real in a way. And the way the, the writing is kind of... The writing is kind of... I don't know how it's actually translated in... Uh, in English, but uh, you know? And also like... Uh, the, the character that you play, Twins... And, like he lives on this island. And he knows people, right? Like, hello, Bob. These people are probably kind of friends. Or people, the weird elephant guy and that guy. And there's something, I don't know. Nice to see you, twins. Ba -ba -bum. And yeah. And yeah, this is one of the... 
like one of the world the game worlds that just just makes me feel good to be in i don't actually really want to i wouldn't maybe wouldn't even really be interested in replaying um you know playing through this game but just you know i just want to hang out in here a bit i don't know That might be some nostalgia, but I think there's actually something to this that like tonally and and from the writing and so on, this game does some stuff that games very rarely do still. Or maybe not, you know, like there's a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like smaller indie games and so on that really do the the hey the characters seem kind of like actual humans thing also really well but no school for me today i'd love to find the trelu and do it in because if i make the trelu whatever that is disappear i'll become a hero and they will erect me a whole museum oh yeah right i think because of Little Big Adventure 1, Twins and this kind of a hero in this. So, we have a museum. I don't know where the pharmacy is. And uh, that's f kind of fine. Oops, I think that hurt. And yeah, it's kind of crazy that... Electronic fucking arts... <laughs> published a game like this. Man, this guy has something to say. Okay. I think the, the start sort of of this game involves, you know, you have to go to the pharmacy and you have to kind of uh, do some stuff with the weather, weather wizard um, to to you know, to make the rain and the, the bad weather go away and all this kind of stuff. Okay, you found your old keyboard. Let me take a look at that. Tiny pink. Oh dear. Yeah, that's... That's some 90s design, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. You know, and then when I think about it, you know, that was, that's that's a cool keyboard. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, I have a sweet ass mechanical keyboard now, and uh, I probably would not trade that thing in for nothing. It's like, you know, not one of the gamer things, right? I'm not really, I'm not really into the the neon colors and all this kind of stuff. I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm too old for that, but uh, yeah, it's just a it's just a black rectangle with keys on it, with really good keys on it, and uh, that's pretty awesome. Is this the pharmacy? Are you the pharmacist? Cassius, Cassius is the money. Yeah, all those additional keys, indeed. <laughs> What is even that little, little joystick thingy or whatever that is on the bottom? Is that kind of a mouse thing, like a mouse nub? Tank controls. Hey, elephant man. Let me talk to you. Hello, Mr. Bazoo. Welcome, Mr. Twinson. Oh, just stand in front of it and do action. Do action. You know, if you want to purchase something, you have just to stand in front of it and do action. Just like in real life. As I said, this game has a realism to it. Impeccable. Okay, Cliffs of the Woodbridge. To the lighthouse at the end of the island. 
I don't remember, remember where the pharmacy was. What is this? I think that's a cafe, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Man, that's a... That's a groovy elephant. I think, oh yeah, that's our statue. That would be kind of weird, right? Like, if, uh... <laughs> like, if I lived in a town, and that town had a uh, statue of me and my girlfriend kissing, that would be... Hey, stop shooting me, you bastard. I need to punch you down the trackball. Translators tend to butcher the word trackball. Interesting. I think around here, trackballs, we're just called trackballs, actually. I think we just used the, the English word for it. What? Mm -hmm. Okay, now that guy's crying. I mean, I'm sorry, but you shot me with your slingshot. Can I actually... No. What the hell are you? Hello. Hello. Hello, miss. D -d 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 something to cure my injured dino fly. Yeah, let's get that. Stand in front of it and do action. But I have an idea how you can help your friend. Aha! The plot thickens. We can actually help our injured friend. Thief! Oh no. Okay, so we have to... Yeah. Right, I, I remember. We have to catch that thief. Hello. Yes, the deal. I will tell you if you would bring back my umbrella. Stealing a, an umbrella, that's just, that's just not cool. Don't, don't steal umbrellas. I don't quite understand what you were saying. What do you mean with that? I'm usually not a fan of this kind of... That. And again, I don't know what you're saying, so... I don't know. Okay. I don't remember how to catch that thief. Probably. That's probably a trick that you can do. Also, that kid is up there again. You know, you pretty much got over it. Also, I punched that kid down a building. Like, from a roof of a building. That's probably not something that... That's kind of not cool. That's kind of, you know... Like the great hero turns and... Should maybe not do that. I don't know where the thief is. Okay, I think that's enough Little Big Adventure. And I think that might be enough streaming. I don't know. Maybe something else. But I think I'm going to... Going to wrap this up pretty soon. Because, you know... I might actually have to go to sleep pretty soon. Because, uh, you know, it's getting, it's getting a bit late here. And I need to get up early in the morning. So, yeah. And I'm super tired, so... Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna call it here. So, uh... Thanks, folks, for hanging out in the chat. Um... 
Oh, hey, Kev. Nice to see you again. So, yeah, um, thank you for watching. And, um, yeah, I, I might do this again at some point. I might actually spend some more times with uh, some more time. Oh, jeez, talking. Oh, God, I'm so, I'm so... Ugh. This day is so over. Christ. Ah, yes. So, um, thank you and see you again, hopefully at some point. Bye.